Let us all record from here. So, hello, Zoom world. Um, thanks for joining us again for another installment of our artist series. Um, this month's photographer we are featuring is going to be um, Shirley Lamb. And her project on the wall behind us here is the transformation of Kaka Ako, uh, spanning from 2011 to 2020. Um, so for those of you who have joined us on here before, thanks for coming back. Um, you guys are familiar with our system here. Um, for anyone new, uh, if it's your first time participating in one of our Zoom talks, we just ask that you turn yourselves on mute um, for the talk so we don't have any distractions from Shirley. Um, yeah, and also apologies in advance for any technical difficulties or awkwardness. Um, if you're familiar with Treehouse, we're, we're analog people. Um, and somehow we might be the only people on the planet who haven't actually become proficient at Zoom in the last year. Uh, so thanks for your patience with that. Hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll let Shirley take the stage now. So this is Shirley Lamb showing her Transformation of Kakaako project, which I should also mention was her uh, BFA exhibition project as part of the uh, Bachelor of Fine Art class of 2020 at UH Madone. To make this bigger. <laughs> so, yeah. we're, we're trying to figure out how to do this thing. That'll work. Okay. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Treehouse, for having me here. Uh, thank you for everyone who's spending time on Zoom with us um, so I could talk about this transformation of Pop Apple Project. Something I started back in 2011 when I was taking a class with Bronco and it started with just a, a simple walk in Papako and I really didn't know the history about the place until one of our uh, friends was telling me, you know, there it was a fishing community here back in the day. There's a the last Japanese sampan called the Kulakai that's docked at Kiwala Basin. So I didn't know much about it and I started researching what Kulakai was and that's when they used to fish Aku. Um, and they would just uh, fish with just a hook. And so I would visit the boat every lunch that I could possibly, you know, um, what am I trying to say? I'm, I would visit the boat every lunch break and just see if I could um, find the caretaker of the boat and talk to him about the restoration, but I never got a chance to see him. But that's what started the whole Pop Apple project. And during that time, I worked in the area and we had to move twice just due to the gentrification and demolish um, and the changes in Kakako. So I walked all over Kakako. So there's actually more to this series than the six images that you see, but these are some of my favorite ones. Um, I guess we can do yeah, like the, yeah, so we'll get into the photos and I'll talk about each one. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Got to do all of them? Yeah, we can do all of them. So I'm sure a lot of you um, remember Fisherman's Wharf. This is Fisherman's Wharf. It's now gone. I don't know what it is now, but the sign is still there. So I used to walk over there during lunch, too. Um, and I'll just wait. And then this is Ward Warehouse when they started demolishing the place and this is what was left over. I think I was kind of sneaking around because there's always security. So um, a lot of this was done during lunch and probably the worst time, worst time of the day to make any photos when the sun is like super hot. <laughs> so this is board warehouse. What's remaining is the, the parking structure. And this, um, I just wanted to show what old Hawaii kind of is it's kind of gone and that there's like erecting are these new high rises that are really tall and this is part of the Howard Hughes um if you see that's like Waia and Anapa here but I just wanted to show that you know it's kind of like I guess my feeling of old Hawaii kind of disappearing and Ward becoming more like the new Waikiki so that's um so that's that image and this is Anaha and it's it's a cool pool but 
sometimes I look at it like a human fish tank because every time someone's swimming, you could everyone's looking up at these people. But you know, um, so that's that one. This was over at Ward Warehouse. It was Kapolani Landgraf and Mark Hamasaki's um, installation of their documentation of H3 freeway um, and the devastation that that caused um, to a lot of the payouts and a lot of um, sites, like sacred sites. So I love this image too, just um, the stacks of books in the middle. It has that little interruption to kind of make you pause and think what this could be about. So. That's one of my favorites over at Ward. I think it was Drew Broadwick um, that installed this too. Uh, this one is, um, this image changed me much. I just love what it says and how I was feeling at that time. And then on the side, you could see the book, A Nation Rising. You can see, um, I think some of Ed Greedy's images are in that book and Franco Samurai's in Change Me Must. But I just liked, the message that it was sending it kind of worked with the, the whole project and everything. So there's a lot of details, I think, in the images that I make um, that means something to me, but hopefully collectively means um, you can kind of see what I'm trying to say with them. Um, this is a boat mechanic at Todoki that was on Hallekuila Street. They're no longer there. I tried to see if I could go back this year to talk to the owner. Um, this is one of his workers work, working on a boat mechanic. So I spent my lunch in this shop. I asked the owner if I could photograph him. He said no. And he's like, just take a picture of my worker. I'm like, okay. So I did. And I spent time with him. He's like smoking a cigarette. It's pretty cool. But I was asking him, I was like, what would you do if Rail came over? He goes, I don't know. I guess I'll just retire. So this boat shop he opened post World War II. So they were open for quite some time and they just, I think 2021, just closed up shop. So everything's gone. It passed by recently and it's all gone. Um, so yeah, this one was pretty My daily walks. <laughs> There's a lot of construction photos, but it's also um, me watching Ward Warehouse being demolished, you could hear the crunch and everything. It's just pretty sad because I think um, there's a lot of memories for a lot of us who grew up in town going to Ward Warehouse and just a lot of memories, I guess, for me. This is one of the lay makers, like every I think weekend. I'm not sure if it's like the first Saturday of the month. I can't remember. But they would have people um, making lays, selling flowers. Sometimes you'd see dance classes at Board Warehouse. So she's one of them. And all the people that I photograph, I've asked permission because I don't, you know, I always have to ask just to make sure they're okay with it. Um, this is the salon that I work at. So we got moved twice. We were originally on the first floor at the IBM building for five years and then we got moved over to Ward Plaza for five years and now we're over at Maha. So this is just um, our space just empty because we had to move out. That's part of it, a lot of empty spaces. I got to go into Spaghetti Factory on their last day when they were actually auctioning off all their furniture. So this is one of the rooms that I really love, the windows, the window light and everything I thought was really pretty, but a lot of memories here as well. So Revolution used to be one of our neighbors. I think before Revolution, there was Bank in Hawaii. They also moved there over in Salt. So another establishment gone. I'm just showing like construction and stuff like that. And this is Michael. I don't know if any one of you have been to Island Guitars. So I was there on their last day and I remember seeing Michael walking around Ward Warehouse a lot. And I was like, God, this guy has the coolest hair like flock of seagulls but um on their last day they were so busy so i just asked him hey mate photograph you real quick and he just sat down and he said okay so i still have to give him a print they're over at eagle cafe now so they've moved over there um, that's michael it's very sweet and this walk-in store is what store is it i think it's coffee shop 
Morning it's morning brew. So everyone who remember this walk-in store knows uh, that they had really good musu beans. <laughs> like walk-in liquor store. So that was one of the stores we used to hang out at. And above this store, there was a guy um, who used to fix guitar amps, but we can't find him anymore. He's like one of the best on the islands. So what's his name? Edgar. Edgar, Edgar Audio. So he was up here somewhere, um, but we don't know where he is. He's probably retired. <laughs> um, and then just, you know, some community, like uh, just, playmaking at Word Warehouse. I thought this was a pretty beautiful moment. Uh, Wong's Produce, they're also gone too. I have pictures of them actually working inside. So a lot of empty spaces. And then this one is the model that I saw and I, it kind of was shocking because there's so many high rises that's coming about. Um, I don't know if anyone feels the same, but you know, I'm not against development, but I just can't see the, the horizon anymore. I feel like, am I able to see sky anymore if I look up instead of building? So I don't know, it's just like um, a feeling that I got, it's just like, is it is it too tall? Is it too much? Just the question, just like, what um, what are they building for? And some of the, the luxury high rides are so expensive that I know for me personally, and some of my friends, we wouldn't be able to afford to live in there. But that's, I call it the master plan. I have to plan. <laughs> but, but, yeah. 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 Hey, if you guys have any questions, you can shout it out. Or shout it out. Or yeah, if we have those, uh, uh, if you guys do have you questions, have questions like, please do the chat uh, function. And I'll, um, I, we can get in there at the end uh, and answer a few of them. Um, so we have a question already from Oliver. That was what your, what was your favorite part of making this? Um, so I'm gonna, Shirley and I are gonna talk a little bit about the work. I'm gonna ask her some questions and then we'll revisit that chat section at the end. If you guys have any other questions that we haven't addressed. So as we're talking through stuff, if things come up, feel free to type through. Um, but yeah, let's lead off with, with Oliver's question, which again was, um, what was your favorite part of making this project? I think, I think my favorite part was um, making connections with people who were there. Because um, I would sit at Word Warehouse every day during lunch. And I remember Mr. Mr. April, I kept asking the owner, I said, Can, may I? May I take a picture of you? And she's like, no, my hair is messy. But like, you know, every day it was like persistent. It's like, today? No, but I think it's just the connections that I made with people and just talking to them and hearing their stories, I found was my favorite part. So I'm hoping this project even expands to others. Like, I would love to hear stories of those who've lived here before, or even photos of those who've lived here before, anyone even documenting because one person can't do it. So I'm just, I'm hoping there are more of you out there that's also doing this study as well. Yeah, I think that's a great kind of idea because this type of project, there's so many ways for it to expand, yeah. right? Like we've put kind of a capsule on it just because um, this is the moment, this is the work as it is. It's Kaka'ako 2011 to 2020. But, but that expansion, that idea of that transformation, right? Can work in time both directions. Kaka'ako is continuing to transform. It is going to continue to transform into the foreseeable future. We need people documenting that change. And then going backwards pre-2011, Shirley addresses this a little bit in her artist statement and when she, how she opened her talk talking about um, the salt ponds mm -hmm. and different uses, you know, from a traditional use of Kaka'ako in pre-contact culture to how it developed uh, proximity to the harbor becoming kind of an industrial hub. Now, uh, the art scene that's exploded here with powwow and other things, and now kind of a retail living shopping space yeah. that it's turning into. Um, and then the, that idea of expanding it beyond the, the single artist, right? So yeah. I think it's great having that perspective of thinking of being aware enough that yeah. you understand that you're not the only person documenting this or having this experience, right? And 
Yeah. And it is important to get different perspectives because that, that's how you get a true kind of sense of community. I agree. Um, yeah. And then beyond Kaka'ako too, right? So the rest of the island, the rest of the state, wow. even outside the whole world is changing. It's um, all changing. I think we had a question from our live audience. Did you have something to ask there, sir? <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, 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 why, why is these six your favorite? Why, why did you pick these six? That was, that was one, I have another one, but yeah, that's, that's one. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the question because, um, yeah, so Shirley's partner, Paul, is here <laughs> with us. Um, and so his question is, we have, out of the 18 images that you just saw, um, and obviously this is a, a pretty broad project, uh, we have six archival pigment prints here on display at Treehouse. So this question was about uh, why these six? How, what, what was the decision process that went into curating these six images to show as part of the physical exhibition? Good question. Well, actually, I think what Fishman's work is probably one of my first images that I made that I was aware, um, that I was aware of the changes that was happening. And I made a conscious effort to, um, I guess, chase it, chase it down and, Sorry, that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um the one in the fish, I guess the fish tank. I hate saying that. I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> the glass bottom pool. It just um for me it shows the changes that we're moving towards. Um the future of Hawaii is is just different with modern buildings that are mirrored. I don't know. Um, so that one spoke to me a lot. And I think the, the one with the building, it's pretty like, um, it's pretty easy to see because it, it shows like the old Hawaii being torn down and then the new ones coming about. Yeah. That one. So I don't know, that one's, um, that one's, I don't know, for me, it just spoke to me. It's hard to say. Sometimes everything goes by my gut feeling. And then, and then the um, Kilia Mo'o, I just love what um, Kaku and Mark did in their documentation of the H3 freeway. So if you guys get a chance to see their book and their work of documentation, it's, um, it's pretty powerful. Um, I think this image too, um, what I appreciate this image is like how layered it is because it's, this exhibition of the Piliomo'o project um, that they did on the H3 construction is about this sort of transformation in its own right. Of anyone who's familiar with what happened in that um, Ko'olau range connecting Kaneohe to Halava, building the H3, um, and all of the sort of controversy, opinion, right? That was a project that was over a prolonged amount of time, um, had a lot of issues with it. Um, being exhibited in Ford this space in Ward, <laughs> right? And this was kind of a, if you guys who aren't familiar uh, with this venue, basically when Ward Warehouse was about to be shut down and, and torn down, raised, um, a, lot of, a lot of the tenants vacated. Um, and so there were these sort of short leases mm -hmm. available for people to repurpose these spaces. And, and one of the great things, um, yeah, this gallery was, curated by Drew Broderick was they had this, this short, very short-lived gallery where they, um, yeah, showed some really incredible work that yeah. was really kind of addressing, I think very intentionally, yes. um, this idea of transformation of sort of the ephemerality. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, so uh, I just love this one, how kind of meta it is. Yeah. Right? Like it, you're, if you're hitting the same theme from like <laughs> five different angles. I love that one. And then, of course, you know, change we must and animation rising. Um, there are other two photographers involved in that one too. There's uh, Franco Samaragi and Ed Grevy, and they, you know, as as outsiders from the mainland coming into you know Hawaii and just doing the kind of work that they did, um, it shows that you know building these relationships are important and, and just understanding where you're where you're at um, in Hawaii. I consider myself like second generation settler in Hawaii. 
So I, that one spoke to me a lot too. And I just love that, you know, change we must, you could, you could see it in one way or the other. Yeah, I think that's a good point to kind of talk maybe about some of your influences too. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, Franco certainly, um, Ed Grevy, I'm assuming, is also probably someone whose work you've looked at very closely. Yeah. Um, Mo'o, we talked about Kapulani Landgraf. Yeah. Um, who, can you talk about your relationship with Kapu a little bit? Yeah, um, I think it, with Kapu, I saw her work at the Honolulu Museum of Art. And when I saw her installation, I was like, I want to learn from her. And so I don't know what, the, you know, long story short, I ended up enrolling at KCC and, and then I was her darkroom lab assistant from 2014 up until COVID. So ever since then, I would, you know, um, I wasn't the most gifted student, <laughs> but I was, I felt like I was hardworking. I was always in class an hour before it started. Um, and she will always be there. She goes, you can, you can start working and, and I would work. I would work every or any chance I got to go into the dark room to process or to print. Um, so with her knowledge, I think she's opened me up to a lot of things I didn't know. And I'm grateful for that. So um, yeah, huge influence. And I still, I still ask her questions just to make sure that I'm not being inappropriate in any way and that I'm working um, with good ethics in the community doing this type of work. So. Yeah. What is, so I think that's a, that's another thing that's a, a good thing to, to kind of touch on because I think there probably are a lot of people like we discussed earlier um, that are, are compelled to do this kind of work or, uh, but it is a big responsibility, right? Feeling yeah. like you're documenting or uh, especially when you exhibit, yeah. there's this sense of like, you're making some sort of statement, right? As, yeah. as agnostic as that statement might be. Um, so what, what are some of your strategies or uh, practices that you put in place to make yourself feel comfortable, confident, like you're, like you're approaching it the right way? Um, to, what does that mean to you, I guess? I think, I think for me, it's just um, finding who my resources are. And I use Papu a lot because especially because this was, um, you know, for the people of Hawaii, like native Hawaiian land is really important. So I always ask her a lot of questions um, and research is a part of it. So she always has me do research. Um, and I think just feeling comfortable is just like validating that information with her. And, um, and just being in the area, just documenting like every day and just getting to know the people made me a little bit more comfortable. Because sometimes it's hard to photograph stuff that way. Because it's too close. And you want to, you just want to make sure that you're doing it in the right way, which I hope I am too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just working, just having a goal and something um, and trying to get out what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I think that's well put. That, that closeness is such a tricky thing for an artist or a photographer, especially. Yeah. Like you're saying, if you're too if it's something that's too close to you, too intimate, um, a lot of times you lack that kind of wider perspective. Yeah. Um, but then the same thing, um, it's really hard to portray anything that feels really honest or truthful if you're coming totally from the outside without experience. So walking that line of like yeah. living a little bit in a community or a space that you're documenting. Um, and I'm not the person that goes up to people and say, may I take your picture? <laughs> so that, that was for me a challenge. But yeah. Um, I think when people knew I was coming with honesty and they're just like, okay, so she's really doing this because it's, she wants to know more, then I think they felt more comfortable with me photographing them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And I think that relates too to what you were saying with um, your experience as a student in Kapu's class, right? Like yeah. Showing up, putting in the work, yeah. and ultimately, um, in a series like this, like the work is being there on the ground and photographing and, and you slowly build that trust, right? Over yeah, time. it was over time <laughs> with a cat too. <laughs> I have a whole project of a one cat that I met. <laughs> and that it was, just, I look at it the same way. This one cat was a feral cat and I built a relationship with this cat and I ended up 
Um, she allowed me to pet her rather than me and rather than pissing at me every day because she gained, um, I gained her trust. I fed her every day whenever I could and she knew who I was. What was so, I don't know, <laughs> kitty and there's random names or piggy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I look at it the same way, you know, um, you build relationships with the place, with the people in it. I think it will help. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's probably the master class. That's like the god level of relationship building. If you can get a feral cat to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on before we check out the chat and see if other people have questions? Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions, now's a great time to, to type them out into the chat. Um, and we, can, we can pass them on to Shirley. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I don't course. normally do this. And thank you, Bobby. <laughs> I have my live audience here. <laughs> yeah. um, one last thing that I, I did want to bring up that I'm remembering now before we get to the chat questions. Um, so this, Shirley was part of the 2020 BFA class at UH Manila. Um, anyone who's familiar with that program knows that typically that's the culmination of, of four years or more um, of undergraduate art study. It's, it's the highest kind of level you can reach as an undergraduate artist in, um, in the university setting. And it, it culminates in this exhibition that's typically in the springtime. Um, unfortunately for Shirley's class, this lined up exactly with COVID. So mm -hmm. for the first time, and I don't know how many years, probably the existence of the BFA program. This is the first one. Yeah, they weren't actually able to show um, in a physical space at the main gallery at, at UH Manoa. Um, so they had to transition online as kind of our whole work, professional art life has had to transition mostly online. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? What, what it was like preparing for what you thought was going to be a physical in-person exhibition and then having to sort of oh my readjust everything to a digital space? And, and did that influence like your, the way you curated your, your series or the way that you, your image selection, how you chose to um, opening to the digital space, you know, it's limiting in a sense, but it also opens up a whole other world of potentials. So how did you kind of deal with, with that it was, um It was tough for a lot of us, I think. I think for me, photos is a little easier because I could always turn something to JPEG and just put it online where I see Karen. Karen does ceramics. She didn't even get to fire her ceramics, but it was, you know, it was challenging. I think for me, I set a goal to do 15 images and my goal was 15 images. And to do it online, I had six frames. So that was tough. I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So I ended up doing, I think, diptychs and triptychs. So if you were to look on the UH website at the 2020 BFA, you'll see it in triptychs and diptychs. Because I was only allowed to do six pages online. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but it was it was a lot of work. It was a lot of sifting through years of negatives and everyone saw me at DI. I was at school from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> and then usually when no one's at uh, in the digital lab, I'm scanning images and then I'll sort through them. Sometimes I'll be in the dark and just printing out like just proof prints to see how I could sort the sequence out. So it's a lot of work. I don't know if I'm the best person to sequence and edit my own work. So I'll probably have someone look at it and edit it from here. Mm -hmm. But um, that, long story short, that was my process, just like scanning, editing, and a lot of it was done in Photoshop just because of time restraints. And then when everything shut down, then I was like, okay, well, I don't have to make big files anymore, I'll just make it JPEG. But everything was done. So all I had to do was sequence and then, but I just feel bad for the other students who weren't working in photo. I think photo is a little easier, it's two dimension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and anyone who hasn't, um, that BFA exhibition is still online. So check out the UH Manoa Department of Art and Art History website. You can link to it there um, and definitely check out the work. Try to look into the, the individual artists too, to their artist websites um, and, and give them, you know, the eyes on their work that they, that they would have gotten under any other circumstance. I, I hope people have taken the time to look at the digital exhibition. Yeah, there's also that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh. So Shirley is, has another, um, some other exhibition news. I'm gonna put in another plug. Um, so downtown art center. So 
someone, I, I think it's uh, Joy who is coordinating this whole thing. She's the BFA 2021. Is that right, Karen? BFA 2021, she's coordinating for some of the BFA 2020 and 2021 to join in in an installation exhibition at Downtown Art Center sometime in May. Um, so if you look up Joy Sanchez, I know the link is up there. I didn't put the link up on mine yet, sorry, but I will. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. It's yeah, on the horizon. Tuned. That's gonna be in May sometime. Um, and then I know I said last thing, but last, last thing before we go to the chat. Um, so that, you talked about your darkroom background, yeah. shifting to digital as part of kind of just your regular practice and then shifting entirely to digital for the BFA exhibition. Um, have you been in the darkroom in the last year plus? No. No, yeah, no. neither have I. It's, it's sad. It's crazy, right? It's I like the longest it. amount of time. I miss the in, smell. Yeah. I, I miss getting my hands cracked. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just miss printing. Yeah. I do. How do you, so would you say that your heart is still in the dark room? Oh, yes. I mean, sure. so is that of the two workflows? Do you, like moving forward in an ideal space, you know, if you saying we have access to everything, yeah. do you see yourself continuing to work in kind of a hybrid method? Um, I guess, do you, or do you consider yourself like a core, pure analog photographer? I think it depends on the work. Mm -hmm. If the work, um, I mean, I love dark room. I think my heart will still stay in dark no matter what. I've also looked into alternative processing and printing, doing cyano, yeah. and then transforming that into like a like a tea dye. So I still like the process of making my own prints. I'm not sure if I'm. I like digital. There's nothing wrong with digital. I love it because you can print on different paper. But I think it just depends on the work. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good <laughs> answer. Um, so we'll we'll check in now and see if we have any other. Looks like we do have a few other messages here. Um, yeah, so we had another one from Oliver. What's your impression of Kakaako now? Do you plan on documenting it? So that kind of touched on that a little bit before. I, you, but... I think I've slowed down. I'm waiting for rail to make it down here. Because <laughs> I think it's supposed to come down here. I think the Kukuna Hale or I think where the old folks home is. Mm -hmm. I think that was going to get demolished because one of the ladies tried to drag me to go march with them, but I had to go to work. So <laughs> I'm still going to document. Um, I, I slowed down, but I think once summer hits again, I'll probably be back in the area. Because we just had, um, I know Bobby was there. We were, um, we signed, what did we sign, Bobby? That SB1334 to um, avoid any more high rises in the Kakaako Makai area because they were going to surpass 200 feet was it 200 to 400, to 400. so um so yeah it's still it's still going I don't think I'm gonna stop for a while <laughs> it's changing I guess we have to adapt yeah <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have a boat that can take me out because <laughs> I would like to Photograph it from a different point of view, but anyway, you guys can hit me up with DM me on my ice cream. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Mel and Mara say that they missed the cat too. Oh, I know, Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's okay. And then um, yeah, last one in here from Rebecca asking, why do you choose to shoot film, which we touched on a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but you can go a little more into that. And how does the community? Or people react to you working in that medium. So I guess how do people react to seeing someone out shooting with a film camera versus a digital? I think people are kind of surprised, but I was born in the 70s, so it's kind of normal for me. Everyone had a film camera. I used to go to lots to process my film, and all the girls would on one hour double doubles. I'm like, yes, please. They want Kodak, they want Fuji. I'm like, I don't know. I guess whichever one's on sale. But I always thought like only professionals could photograph in black and white. So I always use like cheap Kodak gold, whatever, but I love those. Um, but that's why I've continued film. I think I just like the surprise and the process and it slows you down a little bit, you know? Um, whereas digital, you could last away, at, I don't know, you get like over a thousand photos after and it's just so much to sort through. 
Yeah, I think <laughs> you touched on that, right? When you said that you're not the best person to edit or sequence. <laughs> like, I think a lot of us who shoot film really share that sentiment. Is right. We prefer to, you know, we're photographers, we're not editors. No, <laughs> it's because your favorite one won't work in the sequence. Yeah. And you have to get rid of it. Yeah, so, so. sometimes having limited choice is a, a good thing. Right? Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, I think that's going to kind of wrap it up for us. If you have any closing remarks, anything else you wanted to say? Uh, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for taking time to be here with us. And thank you again, Treehouse, Bobby, and Drew for hosting here. Um, I think that's it. Come check out the prints if you like. Ask me more questions if you want to. If there's anyone who's doing the same thing, I would love to see your photos, too. Yeah, or absolutely. any stories. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have the prints up all month here at Treehouse, so through um, um, the end of April. So come on in. We're here every day, 11 to 5. Come check out Shirley's work. Um, you can find her on Instagram, right? Instagram, Shirley Lamb Photo. Um, message her on there. Check out some of her other work. Uh, this, like we discussed, is kind of an ever expanding series. So yeah. you can stay tuned there. With her. Um, thank you, Shirley, thank for you. sharing this work, for joining us today for this talk. Thanks to all of you guys for tuning in. Um, if anyone joined late, we did, um, we have been recording the talk, so we will post it up on our website at some point in the next couple of days. So if you missed the first half or want to revisit, um, that, that'll be available on the Treehouse website, um, treehouse-shop.com. And Thank you guys again. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you guys. Bye.